Good morning, everybody. It's Randy with Carchaeology and day two of Brubaker Box Paint and Prep. So the guys are going to be here in just a little bit. It's just before eight o'clock this morning. They said they'd roll up at eight. Uh, we'll see how timely they are. And then, uh, and then we'll let them at it and we'll see how far uh, they can get uh, on the paint and prep for this. So they made a lot of action just yesterday uh, afternoon. Uh, it was fun to see these guys work. Both of them were after it hard and heavy. Uh, we got the colors picked and stuff yesterday. I'm super excited to see some color on this body. Um, and it was kind of a sleepless night. I was really excited about the project, about both the projects, both the Brubaker and the Myers Manx. I want to see those colors on those cars uh, and then I can get started doing the other stuff to them. So in any case, follow along today. We'll see where we end up with the Brubaker box. Please subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the updates as they roll in. Um, and thank you so much for watching. So uh, anyway, here they come. Definitely excited about getting some color on this rig. It's going to be amazing to see this thing come to light. And I'm really excited that I've got a couple of guys here that are willing to help and make it happen. Um, you know, I've done a little bit of body and paint and that sort of thing, but I'm no pro at it. Uh, where these guys are skilled, they've been at it for quite a while, and the fact that they are working mobile and can actually come here and do the stuff in front of me uh, is awesome. Because not only can I see it happen, I can also share it with you guys. So uh, the process is pretty straightforward, filling some of the damage, uh, doing the fiberglass repair and stuff. Uh, it takes a while, but, uh, but they're after it. Uh, this is the FedEx truck pulling up. This man is delivering a package of something that we need for one of the projects here. And you will see it in just a moment. The box. Unboxing. That's a thing, right? There's videos just online about people opening up boxes. What is up with the world? In any case, in this box is Blue Metal Flake. So this is for the Myers-Banks buggy that we're going to be spraying here shortly. Um, really neat to kind of see it loose in this bag. This stuff is going to be a part of the paint. So this is the metal flake material. It's actual glitter. It's flakes that get put into the paint and mixed into it. Uh, we got this stuff from a company called Didspade. Uh, they next day aired the stuff to us, so we've got it here for tomorrow uh, when we're going to paint that other buggy body. Now this is going to go onto a base coat that's pretty much the same kind of color, and this gets layered on on top of it, and then clear goes over that as well. So um, the color should be pretty much spot on with what we've got here, or at least very, very close. It's kind of hard to see the match here through a couple layers of plastic bag, but... Uh, but it'll be very convincing, very close, and I'm really excited about getting that onto that other buggy body. Now this is the myers Manx body that we're gonna be painting and putting that blue flake on. Uh, this is what is called a pre-tag myers Manx. If you've watched any of my videos, you've seen that I've gone through quite a few of those. Uh, but this particular one is a pretty early one. Uh, we got it from the original family. It's got some spectacular history. Uh, you can check out some of the other videos that I've posted about this one. Uh, all the fiberglass work has been done. It was done by a gentleman by the name of Miguel, who has worked with Bruce Myers for for decades uh, as his right-hand man in building the bodies and doing that sort of thing. So he's probably one of the most knowledgeable Myers Manx guys ever. He completely reconstructed the back of this car, uh, used a mold from another original one. He redid uh, the whole back wall of this, which had been replaced with a chunk of plywood and some really nasty home done uh, fiberglass. Now that's gonna be all smooth and beautiful. And it's gonna be awesome to see Andrew and his uncle uh, throw some flake on this and get it nice and shiny. So this is the floor pan that's for uh, the Manx that we are painting. This is the original chassis that was from that build when it was done back in late 1966, early 1967. Uh, ben came uh, out and knocked it out of the park. He did new pan halves here, including the sectioning down here near the battery. Super clean job there. 
He replaced the frame head on this because it was rusty and also did some patching along the center spine of this because there, there were some areas where the metal there was thin. And he initially wanted to just replace this with flat metal. I'm like, dude, you can't be doing that. We've got to have it look proper. So he managed to, to save this original metal uh, and do some brazing and stuff and cleaning up in there. Uh, and it came out fantastic. So this has all been painted black. It's a little dusty from sitting out here awaiting its turn to go under the car. But we'll detail that all up when it comes time to assembly time. But once that body is done and everything's cured, we can start to build this buggy back into its former glory. Moving back to the Brubaker box, checking in on the rear bumper repair. Uh, this rear little grill pre piece that was really tore up is now glass back on there. That's looking so much better. Uh, now we're going to do a little bit of work to uh, trim each side of the rear bumper so it looks even and proper over here, nice and clean, because it looks like the edge of that had been buggered up quite a bit. Uh, interesting little ghost lettering here. Uh, can't quite tell what that says. Uh, possibly rent or Renton. Uh, the car did come out of Washington at some point, so perhaps that has something to do with it. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, on to doing finish work here to get this piece all back into shape and some mild reshaping of the rear bumper. Uh, we've got to pull the license plate off of there, get the license plate off. Um, here is uh, Gus doing the uh, uh, some cutting on the rear bumper. Uh, it looked like that lower edge had been trimmed on one side, but not on the other. Uh, and rather than try to reshape that whole thing to an edge that we don't know exactly what it was, uh, we're just going to trim that back so it's even on both sides, so it looks like it's always been the way that it is. So now we're in the process of rolling the car over to uh, the other side of the lab. Uh, we don't want to spray any paint uh, where uh, overspray will get into the garage and get on any of the other projects. So fortunately having a big enough property to uh, be able to move it around and get it to the other side um, will help. So uh, with a little help of my son Ian, uh, we've got uh, Andrew is at the wheel, I'm driving the tractor, Gus is pushing here, uh, and we should be able to get this uh, thing around there. So it's a little bit of a tight fit uh, coming through the gate. I could have taken it out onto the street and run it through the bottom gate, but uh, just taking it through the yard is, is a better way to go. So I get the best seat in the house here. I can watch these guys work while I run the Kubota and uh, we can get it off into its spot. So fortunately, there's some shade on this side of the of the property as well, and that's going to be great. It's been really warm out here uh, this week, and uh, working in the shade is definitely the way to go when it comes down to doing a hard labor, and that's what these guys have definitely been doing on this thing. But uh, anyway, next time it moves from this spot, it's going to be shiny. So how was that first drive? Oh man, drives like a boat. Drives like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> a nightmare maybe, but we're here. <laughs> So progress is being made, and so far I'm really excited. These guys are knocking it out of the park. Uh, here's Gus working on the uh, the rear bumper. We're off in the shade here, which is great, much more comfortable. We removed the side door, which was kind of a bugger. It slides on this metal trim that's riveted up to the top of the body, uh, and uh, that all comes off as one big unit. Uh, but that'll allow us to get into the door jams here, do proper finish work there uh, all the way around, have a nice cut line up into that interior panel so it'll all look super clean. Uh, I'm thrilled with the way the rear bumper is coming. Uh, Gus evening out that rear edge, that bottom edge there is going to look really nice rather than being all ragged the way that it is. Uh, and glassing on that little rear piece that had bro been broken off, that's coming out good. Here's a good thick layer of a filler on there that uh, needs to be sanded off. Um, but overall, I think it's going to going to be good. So we are spraying outside. I don't have a spray booth here on the property, even though that would be awesome. Um, but we're going to do the best we can with the environment around us. Um, but definite careful masking is a part of that. So we're going to mask off the whole roof of the car, the whole interior of it as well. We'll cover the wheels, so on and so forth. Try to keep that primer and any top coat out of the interior of the car, even though the interior needs to be completely done. But... Um, 
looking at it here I don't think it could get any uglier it almost looks like it's camouflage through all the different layers of paint and filler and primer and everything that's on there it's a spotty scabby mess but once we start getting some primer on there you'll see a fantastic transformation so here's Gus laying on some primer this is a good filler primer this is going to give us a basis to work off of and it's also going to show any sort of flaws that we missed in going over it initially so getting a good wet coat on there you'll see any areas where it soaks into a crack or exposes a chip or something like that um, so this will be a good start to work with and it also helps visualize the whole thing kind of together so I certainly wouldn't leave it painted gray, but uh, just seeing a solid color on there uh, is confidence inspiring and, and exciting. But uh, in any case, um, laying on a good uh, thick coat here, Gus ended up going around it a few times, uh, laid a lot of primer on here that we can work through, um, which is going to be great. So uh, tomorrow it is going to be all further prep on this body and we'll go over this thing really closely from front to back to try to find any flaw that is there and work it back into shape uh, before that top coat goes on there. There's a prime spot where cracks were exposed that we didn't see before on that rear bumper. We were so focused on that broken center section. Uh, it wasn't until you get primer on the whole thing that you realize, whoa, there's cracks over here on the side. Um, but all of that will get taken care of. We're not going to paint over that stuff. Uh, we've got to get it right and make it look good. So uh, in any case, uh, laying on the last of the primer here, a uh, good thick heavy coat to work with, uh, both to sand through and also to work off of for any final finishing and repair. But I'm digging it. All one color. I'm dying to see it green though. Man, I'm so excited about that color. The more and more I look at the chip, the more excited I get about seeing this thing all together. Looking good. These boys are really knocking it out of the park so far. I'm very pleased and I can't wait to see this finished product. Uh, we've also got the Myers Manx body uh, pulled over here. Uh, we are going to put that blue metal flake on there. And this body's pretty much ready to go. It's all done. It's primed. It just needs to be scuffed and sprayed. Uh, so that's going to get worked into the next couple of days of activity here as well. But a uh, couple primer beauties here writing for their coat. Massive, massive progress today on the Brubaker box. Massive thanks to Andrew and Gus for their tireless efforts on working the body of that silly little thing today. Those guys worked magic out there. I'm really excited to see what happens when we actually put color on it. But it's in primer. We're going to let it cure overnight. Uh, we'll go after it tomorrow uh, to chase down any minor flaws and things like that. Probably do a guide coat on it. Uh, sand it a bit so we can see any low spots and so on and so forth. Um, in any case, uh, final prep hopefully tomorrow for that. And if everything goes well, maybe we can even get some color on it tomorrow. I don't know. I'm not pushing it, but but we'll see. Uh, also, we got the flake in for the Myers Manx, and that body is pretty much just ready to go. Just need to scuff it, spray it, and uh, and then you know start the steps there. So you get the base coat on that, uh, get the flake on there, get some clear. Uh, it's uh, going to be a process, um, but I think we may even start with that in the morning to get that base coat on there and let that set up while we're chasing all the details on the brew baker. In any case, massive progress, totally stoked. I'm really, really excited to see color on both of these things, uh, and I'm hoping by the end of the week that brew baker is actually looking like a car. Now, I'm not going to be driving it yet. Still need to do motors, still need to do electrical and interior and so on and so forth. But uh, getting it shiny, getting that color on there is definitely going to get me excited. And and I just want to drive it. So in any case, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the progress and the process here. Feel free to talk smack in the comments. I know you will anyway. Uh, and I will probably delete it because it's my channel and I can do that. But I uh, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't and keep on digging them up and driving them. Bye-bye.